Hello, my name is Anthony Todd, and today we're going to talk about drag forces and terminal velocity. This is for the AP Physics 1 APAA Access for All program through the Nicewonger Foundation. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is drag force and terminal velocity. Um, these um, are only taught with concepts in AP Physics 1. So you might be asked about um, drag force and terminal velocity, and you probably probably won't be asked to calculate it. You know, they might ask you to calculate the actual magnitude of this drag force, but they won't actually um, have you do the equation. The drag equation will be found in AP Physics C Mechanics if you choose to take that. Okay. So what is a drag force? So this is when we're talking about an object that's just falling, so a free-falling object. So we are talking about Newton's laws here. So an object is free falling and there is air resistance. Now this is kind of like the real world situation. So all the problems we did in AP in the first part, of unit one and two, um, or sorry, unit two and three with the you know projectile motion, we all assumed that the everything is frictionless, but now we're gonna have some air resistance. And this is kind of a play on friction. So whenever you hear air resistance, I want you to think that air resistance is just a fancy word for friction. And this friction, or this causes a force. So friction is a force that opposes motion. And this force that's opposing an object falling through the air. Here we have Benedict Cumberbatch, obviously, one of the best Sherlock Holmes ever. He's falling through, and he's actually um, free falling, and he's actually falling through a fluid. This is kind of a play on um, AP Physics 2, which will soon to be AP Physics 1 curriculum, fluids, is that air is actually a fluid. So air is a fluid. It's kind of a fun fact. So when you're falling through the air, you're actually falling through a fluid. So we can actually calculate the drag forces um, the same way an object falls through water as an object falls through air. The only thing difference between water and air is just the viscosity or how dense the water versus the air actually is. So a drag force is just the force that opposes an object falling through a fluid, okay? Pretty simple. Now, terminal velocity is another term we have learned you've heard before. Now, terminal velocity is, in fancy terms, or just, I would say, kind of layman's terms here, is just the max speed an object can fall in a fluid. Okay, so example, like a person jumping out of a plane. Uh, when, we, when we know a person jumps out of an airplane and they're, you know, they're going parachuting, or they're going, sorry, they're going skydiving, um, they actually um, only fall at approximately, so their velocity terminal, so example, terminal velocity um, in physics is actually denoted with this V subscript T, so that's terminal velocity. So if you see me write that, and that's an example, a terminal velocity for a person falling through the air is approximately 150 miles per hour, give or take, okay? So what that means is, as this person starts to fall through the air, um, the faster they move, the more drag force they are um, experiencing. So the force of drag is proportional to the velocity squared. Um, and that's something you'll learn a little bit more in AP Physics C if you choose to take that. So as this drag force increases, okay, um, it slows this object down. So what's interesting is, even though the object at terminal velocity is still moving downwards, this object is still moving down, um, the object is not accelerating, okay? So this is when all your forces are gonna be equal zero. So we can actually kind of say that the object is in equilibrium. So the object is in equilibrium when it is at terminal velocity. So let's kind of look at that with a Newton's second law perspective. So here we have an object that's falling, two objects I would say, and how can we write this with Newton's laws, okay? So here we, let's take this bowling ball. So we have the bowling ball falling through the air. And if we were to draw a dot diagram, so or a free body diagram of this bowling ball at terminal velocities, this is gonna be at velocity terminal, so at terminal velocity. Um, the mass times gravity is gonna be pulling down and we know at terminal velocity, the summation of all our forces is equal to zero. Well, that means there has to be a force equal and opposite, equal and opposite of our mass times gravity pulling up. But we know that there isn't a normal force. Remember, if we put this bowling ball on a table, so this bowling ball was just resting on a table, 
it would have this mass times gravity pulling you down, and it would have a normal force pressing up. Because remember, normal force is the force um, that opposes the, uh, an object touching a surface. So here's a surface. But when an object is in free fall, there, there's not a surface. So what is pressing up on it? And the answer is that drag force, or it's that fluid. So what's posing upwards? It's the force of drag. So when an object is moving um, as fast as it can possibly go, and it can't go any faster because this drag force cancels this out, and it makes that net force zero. So the object cannot accelerate, so it can't speed up, can't slow down. Now, how a person, or said, going back to the parachute example, how a parachute, how a parachuter, you know, lands safely. Obviously, we know if they don't deploy the parachute. Remember, you're coming back from the gulag in Call of Duty or something of that nature. Um, how do you slow down is, well, you have to deploy your parachute. And what that parachute does is it increases this drag force drastically compared to the object's mass times gravity pulling it down. So you get a deacceleration um, slowing you down. So this is kind of why parachutes are important. And it's kind of how it relates to the drag force. So parachutes increase that drag force. But when you're at terminal velocity, um, the drag force is equal to the object's weight. So force of drag is equal to the object's weight. All right. Now, let's look at graphing terminal velocity. Now, this is something they might ask you to do. I know there's going to be some labs where you're going to have to do this. So let's look at uh, velocity versus time. Okay, so it's seconds, and this is going to be meters per second. And we know that the slope of a velocity versus time graph is equal to our acceleration. So let's just say we have an object, or again, the same bowling ball, and let's say down is positive, okay, and up is negative. So what's going to be interesting here is this object is going to have an initial slope of this. And let's denote some velocity, term velocity up here. So this will be velocity term or terminal velocity. So as the object starts to fall, it gets faster and faster, and that drag force slowly increases. So what you think about over time over here? Let's think about over time. So here we just dropped it. You got mg. And as time progresses, that drag force gets a little bit bigger. Okay? And so what's happening here is we're, we're going to get a, a deacceleration, per se. Okay? So the object's going to start to deaccelerate, up until the force of drag is equal to the object's mass times gravity. So we're going to get something that kind of looks like this. Okay. So we're going to get a slope here that's going to be equal to G. And then as the uh, object speed increases, this starts to slow down. The slope becomes really, really close, and then it will, it will become zero over here. And when it becomes zero... This is when the object is at terminal velocity. So this is kind of a graphical way to look at terminal velocity. Now, I have seen this before on the AP Physics free response questions. So um, you can kind of gauge um, a lot of different things from this graph. Um, but that's kind of the big takeaways here is if you can just understand that the slope right here would be equal to gravity. So 10 meters per second squared. Okay, and then we have a deacceleration causing our um, acceleration at term velocity to be zero because remember the the slope is perfectly flat okay let's do an example so a block with a mass of 4.4 so i have to say a block or a brick i should say brick it makes it a little bit better so a brick with a mass of four and a half kilograms rests on top of a building when a construction worker accidentally knocks it off the brick falls and reaches terminal velocity draw a free body diagram of the brick moving at terminal velocity so it's pretty simple so we know the force of drag will just have to be equal to the mass times gravity of our brick at terminal velocity because the summation of all our forces is zero because the object is in what's called dynamic equilibrium. Okay, What is the amount of drag force acting on the brick? Well, we know Newton's second law. Summation of all your forces equals ma. And so we have, let's assume down is positive. So we have um, mg minus force of drag equals m. A, but our acceleration is zero, so therefore mg is equal to the force of the drag. So we actually know that the force of drag is just equal to mg. So the drag force would just be equal to 4.5 times 10, which is right at 45 newtons. Okay. If an identical brick was dropped at the exact same time as a ping pong ball, so now you have a brick. So now, now the construction worker starts starting to think here. <laughs> 
So now he's dropping a brick and then a ping pong ball. Which object would reach terminal velocity first? Explain why. Well, the perfect example would be, obviously we know it would be the ping pong ball. Because we know the force of drag is proportional to velocity squared. Okay, and then there's a drag equation that kind of goes with that. But as this object falls, once you think about this, how much uh, the force, draw the free body diagram, the force of drag needed to slow down this brick would be significantly greater than the force to slow down of this ping pong ball. So I would kind of relate that. Um, the ping pong ball has less mass, thus um, less drag force is required to make the equilibrium zero. So therefore, the brick would reach it faster. All right, thanks for watching.